Now we're going to talk a little bit about what we can do after we detect a PE. It's great to make that diagnosis, but it's important to realize that our work does not stop with just diagnosing the PE. There actually is a systematic way of evaluating for complications or sequelae of a PE. One of those things, a big thing that actually changes management, is looking for signs of elevated right heart pressures. Um, and just to be very clear, we're not looking for right heart strain. That's a clinical diagnosis. We're looking for elevated right heart pressures, CT signs of elevated right heart pressures, which actually can be related to, but are distinct from right heart strain. So here we have you know very large PE burden right here, kind of in the left, uh, extending back into the left main pulmonary artery. Um, there's actually some PEs on the right as well too that we see here. These extend, you know, um, on the left from the main all the way into to subsegmental branches. And the way to think about this is that once you notice that someone has a PE, especially if they have a high PE burden, you want to go backwards and see is this causing something that's hemodynamically significant? Mainly is, is it increasing the pressure in the pulmonary artery and going back to actually the heart, where it's hard for the heart um, to actually pump blood through the uh, pulmonary arterial system. So what we can do is just go very systematically backwards and just go to the, to the pulmonary, uh, the main pulmonary artery, the trunk here, um, and, we can, and we can make a measurement um, and if we measure kind of at this level, it looks like we have about uh, 3.7 centimeters. That is um, greater than the upper limit of normal, which is 3.4 centimeters. So already just looking at the pulmonary artery, we have an enlarged pulmonary artery. It's one of the criteria, it's one of the signs of elevated right heart pressures. And then we can go back all the way to the right ventricle and then get a sense of does it look like the right ventricle may have increased pressures? Few ways that we can characterize this. Um, we have our right ventricle here, left ventricle here. Uh, one is looking actually at the septum, and we talk about septal flattening. Um, I think especially here, it looks like the septum, intraventricular septum is probably a little flattened. And what that means is, you know, while the heart is dynamic and we're, we're scanning while it's beating, generally speaking, the pressure in the right heart is going to be greater. So the septum usually will kind of be pushed out towards the right ventricle because of the elevated um, comparative elevation of pressures in the left ventricle. But what we have here is that the septum is actually flattening because the pressure is increased in the right ventricle. And I think we can even convince ourselves, especially here, that part of the septum is actually being pushed out toward the right ventricle. We actually have an indentation here um, that we can appreciate. And that's also probably a sign here uh, that we have elevated right heart pressures. And uh, so intraventricular septal flattening and then bowing to the incorrect side. Another thing that we can do is if we kind of, um, you know, look at maybe a representative slice is we can measure um, our intraventricular uh, distance here. And I think we can make the measurement right here where we're measuring from, you know, inside the ventricle from the inside wall to the inside wall of the right ventricle and comparing it to the same measurement of the left ventricle. Generally speaking, your, uh, this measurement for the right ventricle should be smaller than the uh, left ventricle. So we use a ratio of right intraventricular distance to left ventricular distance of one uh, as our upper range of normal. What we see here actually is pretty impressive. This is 5.8 centimeters. This is about 2.2. It's greater than two. So this is a, it seems to be a very clear sign that we have uh, increased pressures here, which is literally dilating the right ventricle. Now, uh, as we follow our contrast backwards, we can see that, you know, most likely the right atria is also increased in, in size, so probably elevated pressures here, and actually going all the way back to the, to the IVC, we see that contrast 
has refluxed into the IVC and actually into the hepatic vein. So this is another pretty clear sign that we have elevated right heart pressures because the contrast, you know, usually is coming maybe from an upper extremity and kind of feeding into here and, and being pumped out to the pulmonary arterial system. But the pressure is so great in the right heart that the contrast is actually having trouble getting through and is spilling retrograde back into the IVC through the hepatic veins. So those are kind of the big things that we use as evidence of elevated right heart pressures. And we see all of them here, um, just to summarize, you know, enlarged main pulmonary artery, enlarged right ventricle characterized by um, flattening of the intraventricular septum, and also an enlarged size, and then reflux of contrast into the IVC and into um, the IVC and into the hepatic veins here.